TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. And by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me. We might put highlights of the live on here. Doubtful, but we might. Because uh, I don't have to. I shouldn't have to. You should be a Twitch member. And you can go back, pull up my name, and pull up. It'll be right there for you. You can watch the whole live over again. And fast forward, rewind. Now, they might mute some of it, but should have been here for the live. <laughs> Oh, you got work tomorrow. Salute. Appreciate you. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon as well. We post Monday through Friday. New show starting next week. And we got merch. But let's get into this Police Interceptors, man. This is Season 22, Episode 3. Got to start with this. HD, hold on. Why could it look like this? 360p is crazy. Alright. I'm HD. It's a cold, wet winter's night. Mm. While most of Nottinghamshire's 1.1 million residents are tucked up in bed, north of Nottingham... Top stretch D3, we've got a vehicle failing to stop. A runaway golf driver is about to cause a nightmare on the roads. Reason for stop, vehicle's being driven slightly erratically. Why is it always a golf GT that's doing this? Quickly escalating from slightly erratic, the suspected drink driver is barreling through a residential area at 50 miles an hour. And it's wet. Pause. Straight through red eight yet, yeah, temporarily firing. Flying through reds, they seem hell-bent on escaping the law. On wet roads, stopping distances are thought to double. Off one, we're now doing four zero and a three zero. It's not that bad. Zero. Okay. But with the winter rain hammering down, this driver continues putting pedal to the metal. Thankfully, at half three in the morning, the roads are empty as the driver tears through streets at well over 70 miles per hour. That's a lie, you just said 50. In the suburbs, packed with playing fields and alleyways, it's a decamper's dream. We are now at Philistic Road. I ain't never heard a person be referred to as a decamper. That's tough. Somebody put that in a bar. Generally back towards the Arnold thing. Other units are aiming to get ahead with a stinger. Zero and we are Arnold with stinger. We'll look for stinger side. And dog handler Mark is also trying to catch up, along with his trusty canine Morse. Who? Never heard of these. This two. I'm used to Quantum and the lady. Continuing now to Birchfield Road. Speed is six five. However, time could be running out. Wrong side of the road, medium risk, still no other road users or pedestrians. The lead car is still locked on target. Continuing on Birchfield Road, speed is now. I ain't even not gonna hold you. Whoever driving this little getaway from the golf is he, he going crazy a little bit. Four zero. But the golf driver's reaching the end of the road. I know he's gone over the tank traps, stand by. <laughs> With interceptors braced for a decamp, the dicey driver careers over a pavement at full pelt. Obviously, he was going to do this. On to, I think this is killing. I love how police makes interceptors makes everything super dramatic. Like, it's a little curb. Of course he's going over. Why would he decamp right there? I'm going over the curb. Not saying that I would ever do anything like this, YouTube, but I'm saying. Big road again. It is killing big road. Doing Circling past the playing fields for a second time, the suspected drink driver could still be looking for somewhere to bail out. 
Renee's going to get a sit road and speed in 5 0. Where is the necessary all unit, please? Where's the coffee road coming towards you now? You see, uh, we're still on the same loop. We're on Birchfield Road again now. CRA medium. Heading for the end of the road, take two. Yeah, it's going to be left, left, left. Come by. I did this again, he went a circle? The driver decides to take his chances on foot, but the interceptors are hot on his heels. Bro, you should have continued to drive. If you get out and run like driver this... driver decides to take his chances... Bro got out like, ah, my knee, my back. <laughs> Everything foot, hurts. Like, the interceptors are hot on his heels. It's definitely not getting away. You going to jail, buddy. I gotta fast forward through that next time. Top three, we've got a vehicle failing to stop. In Arnold, the interceptors are in pursuit of a suspected drink driver. Bro got out and ran like Derek Trotter. <laughs> who's hitting high speeds and taking big risks on wet winter roads. And they've gone over the tank yet. Stand by. <laughs> After leading cops on a loop of the estate. He's going to be left, left, left. The driver hits the brakes and is on his toes with an officer close behind. Why do we need a recap? As the driver this? makes right. a break for it, so does one of the three passengers who quickly sees sense and returns. <laughs> Leaving Rich Elliott alone and taser drawn to deal with the three passengers. Two of which are becoming aggressive. Get out with you! Right, the pair of you, to all three of you, are being detained, right? Calm it down. Calm it down. What's that? Right, stay there. Going to tease about? Yeah, I'm going to tease you. If you couldn't be aggressive, yeah. Oh. Faced with the prospect of 50,000 volts, the passengers are keeping their distance. I'm sorry, this is not an HD. Am I seeing what I'm seeing? Does bro not, did he have a blazer on with no shirt under it? But still make Or is that a threats. shirt? No, that's a shirt. Okay. Zero from the car. Just need units to me. You're going to smash my head, are you? Obviously, I just need to check. Yeah, they definitely coming home for work. I know, I see why they ran. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I, now this gonna sound wild, YouTube, but chill, chill on me, YouTube. They got a lot to lose. They got jobs, they got work. They look like they work at a good job. They get pulled over, breathalyzed, um, detained for DUI or whatever. It, they might lose their job. That's why he got up out of there. No, I can't do it yet. Just stop. All right. That is not our problem. All right. I that's funeral. Yeah, I appreciate that. But saying you're going to smash Maiden is not going to help the situation, is it? No, because it's my dad. So right. I, I'm yeah. lost. I'll my get, boys. I'll, yeah, I'm lost my I get boys. that. I get why you might be upset. Finally, the cavalry arrives. He right. don't want to stop. That's not our problem. We're telling him, yeah. slow down. Fine. Stop. Fine. Pull over. Yeah, but they've never put me in aggressive with me. I didn't know he's just funeral. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. Fine. Right. Sorted. Right, we'll get to the bottom then, won't we? One way of getting to the bottom better. of it will be to question the driver, and a suspect has been chased deep into the estate. Stay there. Need a unit to me, I've got one detained. Stay there. Put your hands on the floor. Put your hands. Keep your hands where I can see him. To ensure the suspect doesn't get the chance to make another run for it, the officer calls for backup. But after the foot chase through dark alleyways, he's lost. I want a footpath beyond some houses. Can't you, don't you got that little app where they can put in three words to let people know exactly where you are? Pull it out. The lone interceptor uses an app to guide in back up. My what three words are adding, pass. What three words is an app often used by the emergency services to pinpoint locations. Every three meters squared in the world is identified by a unique combination of three words. Bro, I still don't understand how that app works. That is a, I'm not even gonna hold you. That is an amazing app. Whoever invented that app, genius. I don't know how it works, but genius. 
meaning help in the form of Mark, Paul and Chalky is on hand in no time. Hi. What's your name, pal? It's, it's done now, isn't it? Is that you? Is it you or not? You're over town in Paul, not me. I don't know. Well, I'm not the best one. Well, yeah, Chris will follow you from the driver's seat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sort out of custody then, won't we? Let's fuck up with the suspected driving. Hold on. I'm ahead of this out. Not bad. Daughter woke up. But detained, the passengers are free to go. But back at the car, once again, aggression levels are rising. One of the raging passengers sees red and is heading for the cameraman. Oh, cameraman. Yo, bro, what are you doing? They're letting you go. Go. This is... Idiots are just going to be idiots 100% of the time. Kicking off. Going to jail now. He's refusing to go down without a fight. He's arrested for drunken disorderly behaviour. Bro, was good to go. We could have got up out of there. Do this bit nicely, shall we? Lovely do it. It's been an eventful night shift for Rich, having handled the pursuit and an angry car full. Two were quite hostile. Fortunately, I had a taser, so I drew it and read off. What y'all talking about in the chat? Yes, I am. I always edit. Every time I say I'm editing something out, 100% of the time I edit it out. I, who, who says they're going to edit stuff out and doesn't edit it out? Not me. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to have a fight with three lads on my own. Uh, it's just, uh, it's not going well, quite frankly. Well, I've been told that the drive is uh, well in drink. Uh, the speeds they were doing uh, in residential areas is just dangerous through and through. But fortunately, there have been no injuries. And uh, we've brought us to a successful and safe resolution. The lad next in the alleyway was convicted of dangerous driving and failing to provide a specimen, as well as driving without a valid license or insurance. He got nine months behind bars ah. and was banned from driving for 24 months. The passenger who kicked off was ordered to pay a fixed penalty notice for drunk and disorderly behaviour. It's fair to say an interceptor can never drop their guard. No two jobs are the same, and not all suspects put their bad behaviour on show from the get-go. It's not unusual that you might meet, you know, Mr Nice Guy one second who becomes Mr Nasty in sort of a, a split second. If people are fuelled by alcohol or drugs, then they become sort of un... Mr Nasty, that's... That's a... That, OK. You got to use a different name because Mr. Nasty is usually associated with with bedroom time. Predictable by definition, really. Mood swings, one moment compliant, one moment not. Um, sometimes it's trying to sort of reason with the unreasonable. On patrol in the unmarked Volvo are Rob and the Sarge, Ian. Yeah, it's in towards the city, heading towards uh, QMC by the looks of it. 
there are reports of another suspected drink driver. Got somebody who's um, been seen leaving the uh, the pub a little worse for wear. Has got into a red Audi. Uh, we've now got a police officer behind it um, on the ring road. So we're just going to try and catch up with it. While Rob puts his foot down, the suspect is being tailed by a plain car. Now, I'm now not for cover. Continued over Dunkirk. Zulu 5, just coming past QMC now. Rugby player Ian has nearly two decades' experience as an interceptor and knowing that the driver could be over the limit, the last thing he wants is a pursuit. Approaching the next junction with the 453. To kick the driver's journey into touch, the plan is to wrap the Audi in a three-car box. Approaching the T what is it, T-Pack? It splits off towards Clifton. A second unit gets behind the red Audi. Currently in lane two. Closely followed by Rob and Ian. Zulu 5, we're just coming up behind you, Clifton Boulevard. Got your third tee pack in the stick now, we're, we're at the back. With everyone in position, the suspected drink driver navigates off the main road. Please up, please up. And the team break cover. As we approach the junction with A60, we'll go further. Drive, drive, drive. Bro has to know he's being followed. Like, this is too crazy. Car boxed, zero contact. A flawless finish. We stopped you because you got some possibly drink driving. Is that correct? I wouldn't, no comment. Yeah. Okay. How much have you actually had to drink? Uh, a a I've had a couple. Yeah. yeah. What, beer lagers or? Yeah, a couple of lagers. Yeah. The cool headed driver admits he's just. What's the difference between beer and a lager? Is they the same thing? What is the di I might ask Siri, but I'm going to let y'all answer it. Left the pub. So, to clear the road, the team. I literally, when I moved to Florida, that's when I start really liking beer. Like, I would drink beer, but I wouldn't like it. I would just drink it because it's there. But, like, now, like, like, one or two after a long day, it'd be quenching the thirst, Paul. Team move round the corner for a breathalyzer. I have to warn you that it is an offence to fail or refuse to provide me with a specimen under these circumstances. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, good. This stops going like clockwork, as the compliant driver is only too happy to do a breath test. Not a clue. Go on, keep going, lovely, thank you. That's it, stop. So as you can see, it's come up with a fail, with a result of 55, the limit is 35. OK, so you're now under arrest on suspicion of driving whilst over the prescribed limit. Having failed the roadside breath test, the driver will be taken to the NIC to give an evidential specimen of breath. It's not causing us any trouble, having only just left the pub. Um, he might still be going up, uh, so he might blow at a higher rate when we get him to the, uh, the custody suite. We'll just have to find out. Wait, how did they know that he blew, like he was drunk? Like somebody called it in or a police officer seen him leave the pub and go in? Like, which one was it? I forgot, I couldn't. So far, this stop has been plain sailing. But once they reach custody... What are you looking for? Are you putting drugs on me? Is that what you're doing, you? It's a different story. You're nailing me, aren't you? That's what you're doing. You're trying to nail me! Stop nailing me. Well, you came to that realisation. I'm in jail. I'm in jail. I am in jail. More liquor than hit his body at this point. What have you put on me? The search is all clear. Somebody tripped on him. It's crazy. Not going but I, that's tough. With peace, someone I don't restored, salute drunk driving. Ian is that's, ready to take the driver for his breath test. But there's another problem. There's two other problems that I made. Well, I can't go, I can't go before. Ian can't let the driver go to the toilet until after he's completed the breath test. I would have peed on myself. Because if the suspect doesn't give a specimen of breath, 
That first sample of urine could be golden evidence, which can be tested for alcohol levels. Do you mind if I piss on the floor then? Well, I can't stop you wetting yourself, but I would prefer if you didn't. That's what it might come to. I'm a 50 year old bloke, yeah. 50? Despite Ian's preference. Oh dear. The suspect urinates in the cell. I've seen this piss all over the floor, mate. Look. Don't, don't flick that at me. Right, no. Pack it in. Yeah? Stop piss it all over the floor. Pack it in. Piss. I would have never guessed that this guy is 50. He don't sound 50. He not dressed like he's 50. Nothing. Right. Piss Silly. all over the floor. Stupid. Come out the way. Piss all over the floor. Yeah? Last chance, calm down. Now stand up. Well, he out here moving like Frank Gallagher. <laughs> That's tough. Stand up and take a breath. The assistance, and you've just gone like that. I've oh, said... I didn't... You just said like, no, at what... you're not having no assistance. At what Come point on. did I say that to you? I said you have to wait a couple of minutes while we do the test. And you decided to wet yourself. You're going to stay to me. Yeah, we're going to swap them trousers in a minute. We can't do anything. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Are you going to put them on the line as well? <laughs> After receiving some fresh clothes courtesy of custody, it's finally time for the evidential breath test. He going to blow this without a problem? Or we managed to get to this He's definitely going to blow a higher, uh, higher rate now. Because that car, that police ride car, that police ride into the office or into the station, that cold aired and hit him when he got out the car again, the realization of where he was, like, he he, he in it now. Got to calm down a little bit now. Um, he's, uh, he's good, well, he's said so far he's going to go through with the intox procedure. We've got him in the intox room now, and uh, hopefully we'll get a sample. I award you that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? No. Uh, I want a blood test. Once again, the suspected drink driver is not playing ball. Listen to I me. I want blood. Listen to me. Because I know how good I am. The offer is for a breath test, we do not blood, offer blood, blood, blood unless specific circumstances arise and you do not meet that criteria at this stage. Blood samples can be taken if there's a reason to believe someone cannot do the breath test for medical reasons. I would have told him I had asthma. Yeah, I got I asthma. I want to breathe into like, other people's breath. I want blood. Okay, so, <laughs> blood. so, so are, there, are there any medical reasons? <laughs> I don't want to breathe into other people's breath. That's a solid reason. Reasons why you why you might get a bum bump from that machine. Or you uh, cannot or should not provide two specimens of breath. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I know for fact. I, I don't want to. There are specific criteria to meet for you to have a blood sample. You cannot simply request it. So unless you're going to provide two specimens of breath, I'll take that as a refusal. We'll go back to the custody sergeant. That's so wrong. Fantastic. Do you want to stand up for me then, please? Failing to provide a sample can carry a maximum sentence of six months imprisonment, a driving ban, or an unlimited fine. I'd rather take the unlimited uh, fine. Please. None at all. In fact, he kept blowing after I told him to stop. <laughs> well, that's good evidence, isn't it? He's trying every trick in the book at the moment, uh, just stalling for time. Uh, trying to eke it out, trying to make complaints. I've had 15, well, at least 12 cop cars around me, yeah? I don't, I don't know why. What was that, what was that all about? This process has been going on for many, many years, and everybody's tried to find a loophole, and there just isn't one. Uh, the, the law is quite clear. What did he get? For failing to provide a specimen, the driver was banned from the roads for 12 months Normal. and had to pay a total of £199 in fines and costs. I'll take that. Like, in America, I'm taking that. If that's what they're going to give me instead of me going through DUI procedures, like, a, a DUI in America is 10 bands minimum, 10,000. If you get a little cheap lawyer, okay, maybe seven. But I, I, I'll i take a year without driving and a little, a little 199 fee. I'm taking that every time. 
nine times out of ten, you know, you'll get a uh, somebody who starts off like this this individual, uh, absolutely calm, quite placid, um, you know, absolutely fine. Uh, nine times out of ten, they'll remain like that through your entire encounter with them. But this guy's just a reminder that not everyone stays calm. Um, so yeah, never drop your guard with people. I'd remain calm at this stage in life. I ain't got time. Hurry up. Coming up, new offer. You my boys. <laughs> Rapid. Nimble. What are they, Liverpool? Stop currently medium risk. Able to mount pavements and go where cars can't follow. Few are more dangerous than a menace on a motorbike. Ooh. We put a duty of care to the rider because of the, the risk that comes with pursuing a motorbike. To the rider, they'll hedge the bets that they'll be able to fail to stop, will abort, but criminals can't be under the illusion that if they ride a bike, they'll get away with things, because they won't. We will, we will go after them and we will stop them. Not here, can't do that here. But there, okay. In a northerly suburb of Nottingham, dog handler Jen Else is blue lighting to and a job. Quantum. When a rider on a high-powered bike up ahead wrongly thinks the lights and sirens are for him and floors it. Overtaking traffic, failing to stop at 70 and charging the wrong way over and yeah, nah, he on some. He on something official. He ain't on a little dirt bike. Roundabout towards oncoming cars. The reckless rider makes he a potentially tweaked, lethal tweaked. mistake. What happened? As he tries to overtake and crashes into a car turning right. The rider is sent flying down the road along with his bike. A collision at such high speeds could be catastrophic. But miraculously, a Z1 wounded shoot. suspect is fleeing the scene. Uh, he got on gear for sure. News of the crash travels fast. Left together then. Firearms cops Lisa and Paul are one of a number of units. I always see Lisa in these episodes, but Lisa, I ain't never seen her really do nothing. She just be there. She just be present. Bonding. We're just gonna get there. Check that the Lisa just be clocking in. Status of the member of the public who's been here, I would think, and um, try and find the side that's made off. It'll be just here, just all. Decamp, decamp. The bike's all the way down there. That's what I mean. That took you by surprise, didn't it? Yeah. You got anyone? You got any kids in or anything? No. The driver appears to be okay, but shaken by the crash. If you got probably a bit of shock, and you might get a pain later on or something like that, I would no, think. That way. I don't even know. That way or that yeah, way? Not that way. As long as you you've got somebody with you at home, because you never know when when a bit of shock might kick in. All right. Thankfully, the innocent member of the public doesn't seem to have been seriously injured. Boy, I would have been injured. Somebody panned me. But the damage to his car clearly shows the force of the impact. Yeah, they whacked I can't believe how far behind the motorbike's gone. Scattered down the road are the rider's helmet, a shoe, <laughs> and the bike, which has scored the pavement mm. before coming to a stop. Kind of when we get riders of motorbikes that fail to stop, they, they ride terrible, you know, they ride really fast. They weave in and out of um, vehicles, and they don't really see the dangers ahead of them. They're going too fast for their own ability. And if, as you can see, it's a long way down there. After the crash, the rider was seen jumping a fence into gardens. So the team have Suzuki? contained the area while they search for the suspect. We don't believe the um, the rider of the bike's got any major injuries hey. to worry about. It is concerning. It's always surprise. Oh, they've got him. 
Oh, that's sad. So, you see what I'm saying about Lisa? She'll never be doing nothing but just be waffling. She was just talking like, I don't even know what she was talking about. The update we just had over the air is that um, another couple of a AFOs, Dan and Rob, have found him. Um, he's missing a trainer and covered in blood, so, but he's conscious breathing, so that's positive and positive that we found him. Recent figures show around 32% of motorcycle accidents result in riders sustaining serious injuries. Having witnessed this accident firsthand, Jen is thankful the rider hasn't become another statistic. As I've come up this road, it's a typical, got my blue lights on, he thinks that I'm after him and he's just clipped the car. The bike's... All that, and they weren't even on to you. That's why when I be on my bike, I have never ran from the police, but I always make sure to yield and make sure they're not after me before anything else occurs. Rolled over and I was just fearing the worst, to be honest. And we've since found out the bike's stolen, been stolen a year, riding around on false plates and no insurance and he's got no license either, so that's why he's running. But for me, he's lucky to be alive, to be honest. That could have ended very differently. The rider escaped without serious injuries. He's currently awaiting a charging decision for dangerous driving, driving without a valid license or insurance, failing to stop for the police and theft of a motor vehicle. No further action was taken for the suspected false plates. Throw that in there too. You got him for Knowing the danger illegal riders are prepared to put not only themselves in, but everyone else on the road, the interceptors are more determined oh, than more ever bites. to catch them. Out and about in the northwest of the county are Matt and Lee from the knife crime team. Although this shift, it's not weapons on the menu. <laughs> It's rounding up an off-road biker who is refusing to stop. Pursuit authorised, the runaways rallying around corners. Yeah, we, we've never seen this one. This is episode three. Alright, no, I had to make sure. I'm and running red lights at crossroads. Trying to lose the interceptors. One thing the rider isn't banking on is he's caught the attention of the whole team. We're old middle lane now, where's best for us to go? Plotting up nearby are Johnny and Mozza. Just getting a stinger out in case he uh, comes down this way. Stinger's been authorised, so we're going to get one out and sit with it on the lap just in case. And travelling in from across town to tighten the net are Chantel and Dean. <laughs> I remember Chantel, man. Chantel is a wild girl. Y'all remember the episode with Chantel? Sure enough, with Matt and Lee in pursuit, the rider pulls the textbook move. The biker may be off road, but he's far from off the radar. If he does come out of Pleasant, though, where would it come out? I don't think it'd go straight. Roundabout to Cleverly, um, and either do back into Mansfield or right, right towards Sharbrook. Devil, I'm going to go Sharbrook. Oh man, they you right. They authorized the Stinger on a bike? Yeah, they moving crazy. Adrenaline junkie Chantel's dream set of two wheels would be the supercharged Kawasaki Ninja H2R. Hey Chantel, that's a good A. That's a that's the fastest bike you can about get, ain't it? But today, she'll settle for intercepting this off-roader. 
Chantelle and Dean comb the country roads. Hey, hey, up, stand by, stand by. They picked up the rider for a second time. You know why this one seems familiar to me? Remember that video I did where they with all bikes, bike pursuits? This was on it. That's what I knew I, I knew it was something was for me. It's a common lane back towards Mansfield. True to form, the rider is hitting high speeds to escape. Speed is still eight zero in a uh, six zero. He's going left left into industrial estate, out down lane. One three, we're ahead. Right, right, church lane, it's come off the main drag. Leading them to another dead end. I think it's going to go off road again. He's up to old tricks with disappearing act number two. Now the initial one, I think you picked up. So he's gone down there. there. With a dog handler on scene, Dean and Chantel go into the fields to look for the rider. Listen, one thing that I'm not going to play with is this dog. You'll never catch me playing with nobody dog, police dog. I'm good. I, I, hands up in the air. I'm good. No chance for a disappearing hat trick. They find the rider hiding in the bushes. Yep, yep, I remember this. I remember this from that uh, from that compilation I did. Victory for the knife crime team. I'm wondering why it looks so familiar. I'm like, I didn't do this. Boom. Boom. It only looked familiar when it came to the motorcycle parts. I was like, okay. You're under arrest for stop the police. Right, no problem. Not saying anything. We have friends. No mental questions. Got to walk in. Got something to try and call. The catch of the day doesn't have a license or insurance either. Yeah, jump in there. Knowing the next stop is custody, he's been left wondering where it all went wrong. I'm getting caught on motocross bikes. Understand what's happening. Thanks to the interceptor's determination, the rider was convicted of failing to stop and driving without a valid license or insurance. He received a 12-month suspended prison sentence, 120 hours of unpaid work, and was disqualified from driving for two years. To top it off, his bike was scrapped. That's the worst part. Say goodbye to your bike. The road's crime team's bread and butter is stopping suspects on the move. And there's more than one way to get the job done. From full-blown operations... Vehicle stopped. No damage. Turn your engine off. Engine off. ...to reacting to hits on the ANPR network. ANPR? Who is that? And you just can't beat... That, uh, scrapper. A good old bit of interceptor intuition. I knew he looked dumb. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That's prejudice. They prejudice to bikes. The drunk driver got less time, got less of a sentence than that. That's what they say in the chat, Brindy. For well, sure he did. Yeah. That's a good, good one, that. Hey, that's wild. That's insane, man. Maka and Gav are in Newark. See him. Just one look at a passing green polo and they're on its bumper. It's the worst feeling in the world that you turn. Gav runs the car through the police computer. Drugs information, East Leak. Stop him. Yeah. With another unit already on hand, Maka lights up the polo. Get out, and Gav gets straight to the point. Hey, you okay, guys? Yeah, yes, thank just, you. Uh, I'm going to ask you straight up, mate. Are you carrying anything here? It shouldn't be in out. No. So no. I, I, 
Hang on, I'd appreciate sorry, some honesty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Of course, you're acting really nervous, okay? And I've just done a quick check on the car, yep. just in that time before I stopped you, and there's some information around you may be involved in drugs. Right. Yep. So I'm going to ask you now, if you've got some personal use, we can sort it out at the roadside. Right. But you are going to get a search and misuse of drugs act, so it's a good time just to tell me if you're carrying anything. Right. You know, okay. Before joining Roads Crime, Gav spent years on the beat with the Knife Crime team, hunting down those carrying weapons and drugs. Demeanor's very nervous, mate. Both of them. Keep your hand where I can see oh, it, please, right. mate. Yeah. And alarm bells are ringing about this twitchy twosome. What have you been to Newark for? I'm just with my friend coming along. Okay, and how long have you been here for then? Um, I'll say about 40 minutes. They're definitely going to find Class A. Booger sugar on them. He moving like he's done a line from Yorkshire to, to London. <laughs> okay, just come to Newark. Yeah, for forty minutes. Yeah. All right, step out, buddy. Feel Keep good. your hand where it's I can okay. see it, mate. Yeah. It's great to see you, Tom. The cops aren't buying. It's a swift night trip to Newark. So, with the help of fellow interceptor Nick, the driver, passenger, and Polo are searched. Turn around first, buddy. Yeah, sure. There. You want to tell me what this is in the footwell of the car? No, I've, I've right. just been sit, sitting in the car. Right. Uh... Nick him, Nick. Right, at the minute, yeah. I suspect this is a Class A drug, so you're under arrest on suspicion of possessing a Class A drug with intent to supply. You don't have to say anything. Told you. It may harm your defence if you don't answer some questions, something which later learning court. And anything you do say may be given evidence. That yeah. was in the footwell of the car where you were yeah, sat. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just be and also on suspicion of possessing a bladed article. I bought that today. Remember, you're under caution and this yes. camera is filming. Yeah. <laughs> Within five minutes of stopping the motor, the interceptors have found a package of suspected cocaine and... I told you. Oh, I know what a cocaine looked like for sure. Two knives. Well, it was moving funny. But the polo is the gift that keeps on giving. Is that a baton? Yeah, baton as well. Right, as it stands right, it's class AP wits. Yeah. It's bladed article times two. Yeah. And off wet times one, because yeah. it's an extendable baton. Yeah. Has yeah. he got anything on him? It's just the scales. Scales. We'll finish oh, that yeah. search, I'll come back to you. You're moving with the scale and all, you're definitely trying. There's more. There's Mac more. has found a Money. large wad of cash. And he's yet to search the boot. That's what I be talking about, though. Dumb criminals. Like, why are you moving like this? You got the scale, the work, the money, the the the, the, the phones, probably. Like, mm. whose bags is this? Nothing to do with me, sir. He's snitching. Dry snitching. That's had a load of cannabis. He just sold it. Yeah. That's what all the cash is for. Yeah. We'll seize that. So that box has got a zip bag, a ziplock bag in it, uh, like a vacuum packed bag, which has obviously been full of cannabis. It's empty now, but it stinks. Um, so I'm guessing they've just sold all the cannabis, which is why they've got all the cash in the wallet. You so would, yeah, you two knives, a baton, drugs, cash. Decent result. That's hearsay. Back at the Nick. Keen to gather as much evidence as possible, once the suspects are dropped off at custody, Macker and Gav execute a warrant at an address linked to the driver and seize a safe, as well as another interesting find. It's one of these magnetic boxes here, which Under the car. Um, are common for drug dealers. What they do is they put the drugs inside, secure it with a clips. It's magnetic. Stick it underneath the car, and often you'll look underneath the car and you'll find one of these full of drugs or cash. Both items are seized for the investigation. The safe was cracked open, but found to be empty. 
No, everything was However, in the car. However, both dummies. the driver and passenger have been released under investigation for dealing Class A drugs and possession of an offensive weapon. They made bail. Still to come. When? Halfway through a 12 hour day shift on Lisa and Rich. I've got a feeling I'm going to drink this, it's going to go everywhere. Wait till I'm going over the bumps and yeah. real, you know, Lisa, TX experience. The danger thing. Is she driving a day? Is she driving? The danger thing. Yeah. Off duty thrill seeker Rich is a keen adventure racer. In a previous life, he was an intelligence analyst. And now, with 14 years on the force, uh, yes, it's heading towards that way. He's an expert at keeping tabs on cloned cars. Uh, just had an activation on an APR camera of a uh, vehicle that's believed to be on cloned plates. So we're just going to put ourselves in the area, see if we can pick it up. The Black Golf on suspected cloned plates has already hit two ANPR cameras. Off. I'm going to get shield prized. Yeah. Typically, yeah. false plates are often used the to day. hide the identity of a stolen car or a dodgy driver. Yeah. NH were not far down. As a third camera hit comes in, there's no doubt the motor is still on the road. That, AP, that man, that NPR is crazy. This would I be talking. I don't know how criminals survive in the UK. Like what? at the uh, six ten. Nearing the Black Gulf's last known location, the interceptor's view is blocked by a lorry. W lorry. Ah, I think it may have gone straight up, mate. I just saw a golf, I think, go straight up. Lisa tries to get a line of sight. Go and around it, you're a sight of it going police across car. The continuing in towards uh, Brock State. It's not confirmed, though. Straight on. Yeah, go straight on. This is what I've been talking about with Lisa, like... like Go road. Reaching the busy crossroads, um, yeah, go. there's no sign of the golf. But luckily, the oh, ANPR has been the, the trail's gone cold. It's not pinged anything since. If the suspected cloned car isn't pinging cameras, chances are it's been parked yeah, up loose. somewhere nearby. Oh, what's this? No. Yeah. Nah. Lisa and Rich check each and every turn. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's, that's it. it. That's, it. That, that's one there. Until they clap eyes on it. We're with this uh, golf wood field road. The engine is still running and a couple are lingering nearby. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, mate. Is that your car? No. <laughs> Sorry? You get your coat out of it. Coat. You get your coat out of it. You set off your driving. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, no I'm not. What? 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 I think you were driving it. Because I've seen the image of the driver. You're, you're, I'm driving. You, were you, were you driving that car? When? Just there. <laughs> no. So that car's just got there, isn't it? So you've got your you've got your coat out of it. I swear this is looking familiar. The end of this, but I didn't see the beginning of it. Like I didn't see none of this, none of this. You just see me up in the back door. Yeah. Someone is selling porkies and it's not rich. Right, and I'm looking on my thing. I don't see it on there. No, but I've seen the NPR image of a female driving the car. Oh, that's right. I've seen an NPR image of a female driving that car. So we've seen a video. NH, we've got a couple detained here at the shop, so we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. They're denying driving it. Rich applies a little more pressure. <laughs> just keep your hands like See, I'm talking about Lisa. Lisa's not saying a word. She don't be doing nothing. I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, folks, what are we going to do? She'll gonna never be doing nothing. <laughs> In a minute, I suspect that that car might be stolen, okay? Yeah, oh, don't grab her walkie yeah, talkie. Well, that, that's the, that's the reason why. Never ever do. Come on, mate. Stolen car. Okay. Well, how do you know that then? <laughs> and if you know a bit, if you know a bit more about it, then, then tell me. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Yeah. I was the driver, and it's not a stolen car. Right. Okay. Is it on false plates? Is it on false plates? I've just bought the car. You just bought it. I've literally wait, wait, bought the car. Okay. I bought it. They might be on rock. They moving rocky, ain't they? 
They moving like they just hit a. They looking like they just grabbed a spoon, put something on the spoon, heated it up, it melted, pulled it through a syringe, and put it in their body. That's how they move. And look at, look, especially this. The dude. driver admits she recently bought the car for five hundred quid. And while we're spilling the beans, have you got a license? No, I got a one. That's not quite the whole truth either. Right, so you're disqualified until April. <laughs> yeah, it's on, it's on our database, so it's on the DL database. Okay, so you shouldn't be driving. Everything is surprising this year. No, not until April next year. She's banned from driving for another 14 months. Also, the car's not on the right plates. It, it's on, yeah, the clone plates. So, which I think if you were straight with me, you, you'd say you no, know, because you drive whilst disqualified without a license. Okay, which is probably why it's on false plates to avoid having to go through the official channels and get all your documentation well, sorted. Car, so no, just it like that. All roads lead to the same outcome. The interceptors will be taking the car off her hands. They're not going to jail? No, out of it. Just the fact. Right. And reporting her for driving whilst disqualified and without insurance. There are, we found subsequently, a couple of child seats in the car, so it leads me to suspect that at some point she's been driving around with no license or insurance with children for in the car, young time, children. Buddy. So the females are claiming to have just bought the car, which is a regular story we often hear, that they've only just bought it. Um, however, it's been driving around on these plates, we're quite confident, for at least a week. So at least it's today, off the road, she won't be able to drive it with no, uh, no license or insurance um, anymore. No legal action was taken against the woman for the false plates, but she was convicted of driving whilst disqualified and driving without insurance. She was banned from the roads for another 19 months, sentenced to 60 hours of unpaid work, and had to pay costs she might as well of 80 pounds. She ain't gonna never drive again. That's Lisa that lets Rich like. do the honours. On this occasion, Rich. Oh, do I get to drive it? You get to drive the... Uh... Of course Lisa let Rich do the honours. She don't do nothing. She never do nothing. Drive it. Nope. I'm telling y'all, she don't I never drive do him. a thing. Right. On this occasion, you can drive off and... Talking about I always drive them. Never have I seen it. <laughs> Stall it and... Make myself look good. The right one. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I don't know if the, the end of that episode was attached to another episode or something, but it looked kind of familiar. I definitely had seen that ending and like, the police chase with the motorcycle. But I haven't seen episode 22. Was this, is this titled wrong? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gone.